Hello and welcome to this new video on how to use Langchain and OpenAI to make verbose and natural language database queries on a local SQL database. And this is what I'm going to show here. So we're going to import a few dependencies. The pandas is simply for handling the data. Langchain is what we're using to operate with large language models and um, also OpenAI. And we are also going to load these packages into our memory. We'll be using SQLite for uh, administering a local database. So it will be one SQLite file that we're handling. handling. And we're going to go ahead and have our data. So our data, we're going to use the empty cars data set. You can find that at various locations. It's a pretty open data set. It's very suitable for doing a little bit of uh, you know, test queries, aggregate queries. And so I'm getting it from this GitHub users account. I'm making it into a local file here. That's my empty car CSV file. And I'm going to load this into a pandas data frame just so we can have a look at it. These are the first 15 rows. So you usually have a model, the miles per gallon, the number of cylinder, cylinders, and the various other technical parameters of these cars. Right. So there's a lot we can actually uh, get from this. What we'll be focusing on is uh, just taking a subset of the model name, miles per gallon, and the number of cylinders. And we want to have that in the database. So that's what I'm going to be creating. So I'm going to be creating this file, cars.sqlite, and I am creating a table in there that has model, miles per gallon, number of cylinder and with this command i'm putting that pandas data file into the database and then what i notice is kind of like the the top row the the index row usually comes in as well so i'm just deleting that out again that's like a little bit of a quirk of that that i couldn't figure out otherwise but yeah this is how that gets deleted and um, now we have this file here, cars.sqlite. It's a local file. That's a database. And I wrote this little function here just to query it. So what this does is if I have a query for my data, for example, read query, I can pass it on here. It will execute it and then prints out row by row. So this comes quite handy just to check a read query and we'll just print it. So here I did uh, give me everything from the table cars um, up to row 10 and it just prints me the, out this, these records, right? So the model, the miles per gallon and the number of cylinders. Now we're getting to the part where we're connecting to open AI. So um, this is a Langchain class SQL database and it's created from our local uh, uh, resource locator so this is going to be my database object i am then uh, setting my openai api key which i got from openai.com and you can get that too by creating an, AI, uh, an account from openai.com and just note if you actually have a paid account and you're paying money there will be charges right so you can test it for free in a free account but once you move to a paid account every time you run that it will cost you some money I'm now setting up the large language model. Um, this is the, the LLM here, also with OpenAI. And now I'm creating that chain, right? And it basically needs the large language model at my database that I created in the previous cells. For both equals true means it will actually tell me kind of like the logical step process of you know, what query is needed, what is the result. And now, I'm creating that chain and with that chain, I can now run verbose queries. I want to know which model has the highest MPG miles per gallon. So, and you'll see here what it actually does. Um, it creates a SQL query from that, which looks correct to be right. Select model MPG from cars order by MPG this descending being, you know, it's ordered, but it starts with the highest first. And then just give me the first row. That's what this limit one means. And what gets out of it is uh, the Toyota Corolla with 33.9 uh, 
miles per gallon. So this is not a up to date data set. There are cars out there with with you know higher efficiencies, but you know this this model data set you know has has that one. I'm going to run with that function that I created earlier. I'm going to create this. I'm going to run this query locally as well just to see what comes out of it and it's exactly that the Toyota Corolla with 33.9 miles per gallon. Now what is the maximum MPG by number of cylinders? So this is an aggregate query that I'm that I'm trying here, right? So it should be something like max MPG group by cylinder. Let's see what comes out of it. Select cylinder max MPG from cars group by cylinder. That looks correct. Okay, so it actually then also this is the output. We have four cylinders, six cylinders, eight cylinders. And as we know, the more cylinders we have, the lower the efficiency of a car is. And it also kind of gives me that statement in a verbose sense here, right? So uh, it kind of turns these numbers into a sentence. Uh, let's also just do that just to kind of get familiar with it we're going to run this query and it will tell me exactly that right so the the chain also ran on my local database now in this in these first first few examples i always kind of named the field name the way you know i i wanted to to have the query but um Actually, if if I phrase it a little bit more in the way of like what is most efficient, um, you know, that has six cylinders, you'd see like the words efficient or cylinder don't show up in the database. Can actually the large language model translate into that into a correct SQL query that only knows MPG, cylinder and and uh, and the model? And so we'll we'll ask it that question. And it will do the following select model. MPG from cars where cylinder equals six, so that's perfect. Order by MPG uh, descending. So also knows again, MPG represents the efficiency. And then it uh, it prints out the, the limit five, right? So the, the five highest. So it probably just needed the first one. And it also takes that the most efficient car with six cylinder is the Hornet four drive with an MPG of 21.4. So that's actually quite fascinating, right? So just from um, from that, okay, it actually, the funny thing about this is actually that some things in this database is kind of very duplicate. Let's actually see what's happening here. Okay, um, yeah, this might be the incoming data set that actually has duplicate entries and all that. Um, what we can do here just to kind of make sure we're not creating duplicates and we still get a full picture. I'm going to put in the distinct here and we'll see. Okay, this would be the next um, highest models here. With all that, I hope you enjoyed this demo. It was useful. If so, please let me know. If you don't find it useful, let me know as well. I'm always open to suggestions and yeah, feel, uh, feel free to use it and I hope I see you in the next video.